13 actors you forgot went to jail in 2022 so far, and the reasons why. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish Time magazine back in 2018 told us that Tiffany Haddish was among the 100 most influential people on the planet. Is she ready? Haddish is an actress and comedian who made a splash in the entertainment world via the critically acclaimed comedic masterpiece that was Girls Trip 2017. That same year, she got a primetime Emmy for hosting Saturday Night Live and won a Grammy in 2019 for Best Comedy Album. In January 2022, someone saw Haddish asleep behind the wheel of an automobile and called the cops, who then arrested her on suspicion of driving under the influence. She spent a few hours at Fayette County Jail, Georgia, before being released on bond. And, oh, her mugshot is worth seeing. Later in September 2022, Tiffany and her fellow comedian Aries Spears were sued for the alleged grooming and sexual abuse of two minors. We are yet to see how this one pans out. Be sure to stick to the end to see an actor who refused to be gendered and why they landed in jail this year. If you thought that Haddish story was a shocker, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more amazing actor video. Joseph Gatt Joseph Gatt has had alopecia universalis since he was 11. It has set him apart and made him possibly the most unique fella in Hollywood. Gatt dreamed of piloting fighter jets and writing his name in the sky during acrobatic maneuvers but his colorblindness made that impossible. With piloting Eurofighters and the like being denied him, he opted to become an actor, went to drama school, and has been in Jason and the Argonauts 2000, Thor 2011, Star Trek Into the Darkness 2013, Chuck 2011, Ray Donovan 2015, Game of Thrones 2014, and Titanic 666 2022. He has also made a killing by frequently strapping on motion capture equipment to play the part of video game characters, and has been doing this since 2000, even modeling the part of Kratos in a good majority of God of War games. Now, Joseph Gatt is in this video because in April 2022, the cops hauled him off to jail and tore his home apart for talking online in a very inappropriate way with a minor. But he was not their guest for long and managed to breathe free air after paying a $5,000 bail, unlike the Tiger King actor coming up later in this video who was facing 20 years in the slammer. Farah Abraham This lady is a reality TV personality, writer, an actor in that other questionable industry, and singer all rolled into one slender package. She was born in Nebraska and at the age of 17 was chosen to appear in 16 and Pregnant, with her appearance on the show and the revelation of her pregnant status driving her mom into calling her a garden tool and worse. Furthermore, the father of the child never got to see the baby that he and Farah had made because he perished in a car accident while she had yet to deliver. From 16 and Pregnant, Farah jumped into Teen Mom, and her rocky relationship with her mom and family continued. In August 2011, she released a studio album that critics trashed, and later that month, she published her memoirs. In April 2021, Farah Abraham filed sexual assault charges against the mayor of Windsor, California, and in January 2022, she briefly wound up in jail for allegedly slapping a security guard outside the Grandmaster Records Club in Los Angeles. It does seem like she has a predilection for this kind of thing, because in November 2018, she pled guilty to charges of resisting arrest after engaging in a fight at the Beverly Hills Hotel with a security guard. Michael Madsen the Chicago-born Michael Madsen has long been a staple in moviedom, with over 170 movies having his name in the closing credits. He was mentored by John Malkovich and got some screen exposure during the opening minutes of War Games, 1983. His big break was in Reservoir Dogs, 1992, a hard-hitting crime movie that was shot by Quentin Tarantino in his directorial debut. And from then on, he became a regular in Quentin Tarantino's movies. 
2007 was possibly the high point of his career, and that was because his performance in Strength and Honor got him the Best Actor Award at the Boston Film Festival and the New York International Film and Video Festival. He all must have seen Madsen in Kill Bill Volume 1, Kill Bill Volume 2, and 24. And in August 2014, he showed up in the music video for Black Widow that had been firmly Kill Bill inspired. Michael Madsen has been married thrice and is a top-class poet with his Burning in Paradise winning the Independent Firecracker Award and being translated into Norwegian. Other books of his include American Badass, Signs of Life, and the Complete Poetic Works, with the first being dedicated to the memory of the late David Carradine. In August 2022, Madsen's son, an active duty member and Afghan war vet, took his life. One month later, Madsen was arrested in Malibu and charged with trespassing. He later paid bail, $500, and was permitted to leg it home. Now Michael here trespassed, but there is an actor coming up who wound up in jail because he got dumped. That's an interesting story, so make sure you don't miss it. Mike Showhead The Iran-born Mike Showhead does not have much of an acting career and he's only been in Shaws of Sunset a reality TV show that debuted in 2012 and which was focused on the lives of a group of Iranian Americans living in Beverly Hills. The show was canceled in 2022 after nine seasons and was almost universally panned by critics. In July 2022, Mike Shuhead got a bit of a shock when the Los Angeles District Attorney hurled 20 charges his way with these charges having to do with domestic violence, battery, and trying to stop someone from tattling on him. He also faces six weapons charges, was initially arrested in March 2022 for what the police delicately put as intimate partner violence with injury, and had to pay a $50,000 bond to be released from the slammer. Bizarrely though, weeks after being arrested in March 2022, Shuhead went on vacation to Mexico with the alleged victim. During this trip, they reportedly stayed at the Garza Blanca Hotel and Spa, but were cold to each other. Blake Jenner This guy's name might not seem all that familiar till you take a good look at his mug and realize he used to be in the Fox musical comedy masterpiece that was Glee. Born in Florida, Blake was interested in music and movies from an early age. Once done with high school, he moved to California and worked as a waiter and even as a parrot salesman in a pet store, all while taking acting classes and auditioning for whatever movie roles he could find. His first movie role came in 2010, when he won the chance to be on Glee, with his performance on the show getting him a Teen Choice Award. Glee apart, he's been in Everybody Wants Some 2016, Supergirl 2016, and American Animals 2018, and has lent his voice to a couple of basketball video games. Blake married Melissa Benoist, his Glee co-star, in 2015, and she filed for divorce in December 2017. Subsequently, it emerged that he had been abusive to her. You would think that Blake is on this list after having been arrested for domestic abuse, but that's not the case at all. In July this year, Blake ran a red light at around 11.30 p.m., and when he was pulled over by the cops, acted intoxicated enough to be hauled off to jail. This less-than-gleeful fella only spent a night in the slammer. Eddie Deason Eddie was born in Maryland, and he clowned around all through school. He later moved into the stand-up comedy niche and seemed to be doing well for himself. But while performing in a comedy show, he flubbed his lines and did so poorly that he decided to quit stand-up and become an actor. His first film role was in Grease, possibly the best musical romantic comedy of all time, and probably John Travolta's magnum opus. And in this, he was to play the role he would play in so many of his movies that of the nerdy geek who still manages to be super cool. Grease was followed by Laser Blast, and Eddie was soon in a string of comedies or spoofs like I Wanna Hold Your Hand, Meatballs, War Games, Grease 2, Critters 2, and Spy Hard. Eddie has also been prolific in the voice acting niche, voicing characters in video games, animated series, commercials, and the like. Now, Eddie Deason is generally a law-abiding fella, but he's been in trouble as of late. 
In September 2021, he made a scene at a restaurant and was asked to leave but refused. When the cops were called, he hid behind a lady and started throwing things, with one of these striking a deputy and Eddie being subsequently arrested for assault. In April 2022, he unlawfully entered a nursing home and was detained and charged with trespassing, disturbing the peace, and burglary. However, in August 2022, the courts ruled that he was not competent to stand trial. That might seem like a gross miscarriage of justice, but the fact is that Eddie is currently suffering from an undisclosed mental issue and is considered a danger to both himself and others. Gary Busey Born in 1944, Gary Busey is most easily recognizable for his shock of hair, which usually looks like it had just rubbed an electricity surge the wrong way. His most popular role in movie land has to be his portrayal of Buddy Holly in The Buddy Holly Story. And he must have done something right because that role got him an Academy Award nomination. He's also made appearances in Lethal Weapon, 1987, Predator 2, 1990, and Under Siege, 1992. In December 1988, a helmetless Gary was speeding on a motorcycle and there was a crash in which he suffered permanent brain damage. He became much more impulsive after the crash, and this meant that from then on, he would do and say stuff that he previously would have been incapable of. From August 12th to August 14th, 2002, Gary was at the Monster Mania Con as a featured guest, and while there, handled a few ladies inappropriately. He was arrested and charged with two counts of criminal sexual contact in the fourth degree disorderly conduct, and fourth-degree attempted criminal sexual contact. More was to come when, on August 20th, 2022, he went to a California park and was filmed dropping his pants and being nasty. We hope y'all will forgive our poor attempt at a pun, but this predator is under siege in a big way, and the justice system will presumably smoke him once they find the lethal weapon they need to put him away. Garrett Headland. Garrett here was born in Minnesota and raised on a cattle farm. In high school, this guy worked as a waiter, with the tips he received being used to pay for acting classes. After high school, Garrett moved to Los Angeles, with his movie debut being in Troy, where he played the part of Brad Pitt's cousin. He was in movies like Friday Night Lights, Four Brothers, Aragon, Tron, Legacy, Country Strong, On the Road, Pan, Mosaic, and Strawberry Spring followed, with Garrett usually featuring alongside more established actors and often upstaging them. So Garrett made this list because he was in a relationship with actress Emma Roberts. But in January 2022, Garrett and Roberts went their separate ways, and that seemed to have affected him more than he let on because he was arrested for public intoxication in Tennessee the day after the split was announced. At the time of his January 2022 arrest, Garrett Headland, according to the arresting officers, reeked of drink, swore like a longshoreman, had problems staying on his feet, failed to obey lawful commands, and assaulted the fella that called the cops on him. Plus, he was already on probation from a 2020 DUI, during which he had passed out, ran a red light, crashed his Jeep into another car, and attempted to flee the scene. What would you tell Garrett if you met him today? Shane Carruth Shane is a screenwriter and actor who has written, directed, and produced movies like Primer, 2004, a low-budget science fiction movie, and Upstream Color, 2013. Primer got the Grand Jury Prize at the 2004 edition of the Sundance Film Festival and snagged the Alfred B. Sloan Award, while Upstream Color had problems staying out of the admiring mouths of critics at the 2013 edition of the Sundance Film Festival. Born in South Carolina, Shane Carruth studied math in college and made a living developing flight control software before deciding that the movie world held more money and excitement. Now, from 2011 to 2018, Carruth was in a relationship with an actress and filmmaker by the name of Amy Simetz. All seemed peachy, but in 2018, Amy got a temporary restraining order, upgrading this to a permanent restraining order in 2020. Shane, according to her, had for years been abusive, but he denied that that was the case and told everyone who would listen that he was as innocent as a lamb. 
However, on January 13, 2022, the cops arrested him at the home of his ex, charging him with vandalism and domestic assault. He was in their custody for four days before he was able to shell out the $50,000 needed to make bail. Irene Bedard Irene Bedard is a Native American film and TV actress who usually plays Native American roles. She is also a director and producer who studied musical theater in Pennsylvania. Her first movie role was Lakota Woman, Siege at Wounded Knee, with her performance netting her a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a Miniseries or Television Film. Her best-known film role is undoubtedly Pocahontas, the 1995 Disney animated series, and in 1998, she reprised her performance in Pocahontas' Journey to a New World. Into the West, 2005, Songs My Brothers Taught Me, 2015, The Mist, 2017, FBI Most Wanted, 2020, and The Stand, 2020, are her most recent works. Now, in November 2020, the cops hauled her off to jail twice in three days on disorderly conduct, domestic violence, assault, criminal damage, and resisting arrest charges. In August 2022, Ohio cops were called after she started a loud argument with a woman. When they arrived, Bedard appeared intoxicated, and the Popo took her on a free tour of Greene County Jail, where they took this frightful mugshot of her. Bhagavan Antel Bhagavan Mahamayavi Antel, or Doc Antel, is a private zoo operator and animal trainer who has worked for movies like Dr. Doolittle, Ace Ventura, and The Jungle Book, too. Doc Antel was born in California and grew up on a large farm. He traveled to China as a youth and, while there, was trained in basic medicine, getting the Doc nickname as a result. In the 1980s, this fella opened a big private zoo in Virginia that was stuffed with exotic animals like tigers, bears, and elephants. In 2001, he showed up on stage during Britney Spears' performance at the 2001 MTV Music Video Awards that featured the singer draped with an albino python while her hips wriggled with a mind of their own. Doc Antel has, over the years, faced enough controversy to cook a pot of beans. Two of his wives and former members of his staff allege that the PhD in zoology that he claims to have is as fake as a $3 bill, and questions have been raised over where the revenue from his petting tours have been going. In 2021, Netflix released a three-part true crime documentary in which he was accused of assaulting a lady, grooming teens, and pressuring female workers into getting breast implants. Doc Antle's residence was raided in December 2019 by the Horry County Police Department and the Law Enforcement Division of South Carolina's Department of Natural Resources. In October 2020, a grand jury in Virginia indicted him on charges of animal cruelty, wildlife trafficking, and violations of the Endangered Species Act. And he has been credibly accused of running his operations in a cult-like manner and initiating sexual relations with his teenage and underage workers. More was to come when, in June 2022, the FBI took him in on money laundering charges. Bond was later set at $250,000, and he faces a maximum sentence of 20 years. Ezra Miller Ezra Miller was born in New Jersey and had a congenital speech impediment that was apparently resolved with opera training. Miller's first role was in After School, 2008, with appearances in Californication, The Fantastic Beasts trilogy, and DC Comics films being noteworthy. 2023 will see the release of The Flash, with Ezra Miller in the lead role. But the last few years have been marked by Miller's increasingly bizarre behavior. They, yes, as Miller refuses to be gendered, started wearing a bulletproof vest, believed the KKK was after them, and once went so far as to threaten KKK members in North Carolina. In April 2020, Miller was filmed in an Icelandic bar strangling a woman, and in March 2022, they were arrested in Hawaii for disorderly conduct and harassment after insulting patrons at a karaoke bar, with Miller subsequently accusing the police of misgendering them and committing a hate crime. In April 2022, Miller was arrested again in Hawaii and charged with assault in the second degree. 
This incident occurred after they had been told to leave a private party and in response had thrown a chair that had struck a lady. Apart from the above, Ezra Miller, who believes they are Jesus, the devil, and the next messiah, and that their very inappropriate relationship with an underage Native American child would spark the apocalypse, has been involved in other very disturbing incidents. As of August 2022, they are believed to be undergoing mental health treatment. Click here to see 19 actors you didn't know were dead and the reasons why. See you there.